Hello, my name's Rob Reynolds and I'm here to do a little Cornish language lesson for you. So let's start. What we're going to look at today is a bit of Cornish language history, uh, how to greet people in Cornish, how to say please and thank you, how to ask people how they are and how to reply, how to offer someone a cup of tea and cake, which is at the end of the day what we all want, and how to say goodbye. There'll also be some other great bits and pieces hopefully you'll enjoy. So, let's... now Cornish is a really old language. It's been spoken for hundreds and hundreds of years. But with the encroachment of English as became more and more a dominant language, we saw Cornish kind of dying out. Uh, but we have loads of great documented kind of examples of Cornish. Here is an example, the origin of the world, Origo Mundi. Uh, and this was a part of a series of plays called the Ordinalia, and they were performed in the Plenanguari, the, the playing places all across Cornwall. Uh, these are beautiful, beautiful plays, and they are still performed today by people who are interested in kind of keeping Cornish culture and language alive. Despite the encroachment of, of the English language into Cornwall, we still saw examples of Cornish up into the 18th century. Uh, here is an example of what we call Lake Cornish, and this is the, uh, the Lord's Prayer. So, um, so we saw Cornish uh, up to the 18th century when, um, when people started to look at the revival of the Cornish language. So it's always actually been a part of of our community and our lives. Now place names in Cornwall is quite interesting because about 80% of place names in Cornwall are derived from the Cornish language. So here's some great examples. Tre Wints, a windy homestead. So Tre means a homestead and Winds or Gwins, uh, which is what it's from, means windy. Polzeth, or now in modern Cornish would be Pol Sith, which means dry pool. Uh, Camborne means crooked hill. Men and toll kind of very simply means the stone with a hole. So, um, so if you look at our Cornish place names, you'll see loads of great examples of Cornish language in our community right there. We speak it every day. So let's get on to a bit of Cornish. So um, let's start with something very simple. So if we are going to say hello to, to anyone, you say "dith da," which means good day. So "dith da" means good day. It's a bit more formal than "husos," which is a bit kind of like if you meet a friend. Um, so "husos" is kind of like "hi, mate, how are you doing?" Uh, whereas uh, "dith da" means good day. Most people will kind of say uh, say "dith da," but um, but if you're kind of feeling a bit bit more kind of informal, say "husos." Either is absolutely fine. So if you want to ask someone who they are, for instance, you just say Piuosta. Piuosta, who are you? Uh, and so if I was done, going to reply to that, I would say Rob Ove. Rob Ove. Piuosta. Rob Ove. I am Rob. You'll notice that the Ove comes after uh, the name, whereas in English you have I am come before the name. That's quite uh, common in lots of different languages and so Cornish just has it in a reverse way to English. So Rob of it, literally Rob am I. Uh, so uh, you should say Rob of it, so Hazel who uh, who many of you know would say Hazel of it. So uh, you can say you can use that yourself. So Piwasta, use your name of it afterwards. We will give that a go a bit later on. So how are you? Fat la Guinness. Fat la Guinness. How are you? Now, a lot of English speakers would read this and they would look at that word and say jeans. Cornish doesn't doesn't work like that. And and so this is Guinness. Fat la Guinness. How are you? And if you're going to respond to that, you would say, oh, in point down, I am well. Or you might say, oh, clav of it. I am poorly. So fat againis, how are you? Oh, in point down. Fat againis, oh clav of it. There are other things that you can uh, you can respond to that using the of it idea. So fat againis, oh alone of it, I am happy. 
or triste of it. I am sad, teg of it. I am beautiful. I'm sure many of you agree. Um, and serious of it. I am angry. So you can, there's a lot of ways you can use that. Really flexible, very simple. So that of it is, is really good. So as we are all polite people, I'm sure we are, we like to use our please and thank yous. So if we want to say please, we say mar plague. Please, mar plague. And thank you, mer ras. So if we say uh, fat la genis, and you say in point da, I am well, mer ras. Thank you. In point da, mer ras. I am well, thank you. So someone's come around to your house, uh, you've greeted them, you've asked them how they are. Now the all important thing, you need to ask them if they want a cup of tea. Now, I've got a cup of tea here that I prepared earlier. Oh, splan. Splan is a Cornish word, which means fantastic. And cups of tea are always fantastic. So, do you want to have tea? A winter cavos te. A winter, do you want cavos to have? And te is tea. And in a similar way, a winter cavos tezen. Do you want to have cake? So tezen means cake. Quite simple. You just follow that that way of speaking. A winter cavos. Do you want to have? Do you want to have tea? A winter cavos te. Do you want cake? A winter cavos tezen. Other things you might want with it. A winter cavos. A winter cavos coffee. So some of you might not like tea. I know that's a real strange thing, but yeah, there are people who like like coffee. So a winter cavos coffee. A winter cavos leaf. Milk leaf. A winter cavos sucre. Sugar. A winter cavos tezengalas. Biscuit. Literally translate to hard cake. Biscuit. A winter cavos dor. Uh, water. Very strange sound that dor. So um, a little bit of strange that you get your tongue around, but, um, but you can practice that. Door, water, and obviously pasty. And everybody loves pasties, don't they? So um, so yeah, coffee, leth, sugra, tezengalas, door, and pasty. So those are the kinds of things that you might want to share with people uh, when they come around to see you. So. To answer, to answer that, you would say, Minnav, I do. Or if you don't want uh, a cake or tea for some strange reason, you would say, Navinav. So, Minnav, Navinav. Now, don't worry too much about uh, that it's, it sounds strange. Just follow it along at this point and just enjoy the speaking of Cornish. So, a winter cavos te, or Minnav, I do. A winter cavos tezen. Nav in nav. I don't want cake. So that's uh, all of those kinds of uh, polite things to do. So you've had tea and cake with your friend, and so they're going to head off afterwards. So, um, so how are we going to do that? So if you want to say good night to somebody, we say nozda, literally night, good. But remember this backwards thing in Cornish. So nozda, night good, or in English translate to good night. So if you just want to be a bit more informal, you say the wellis, see you, the wellis. Now um, that's an interesting sound, that DH sound. Uh, even though it looks odd, we have that sound very much in English. So if you use the words this or that, uh, that's in that word the, it's just, uh, just in English we use uh, th to describe both sounds so we have the like a th sound like thistle or a the sound like the word that so in in Cornish you have a th and a dh so the dh just just kind of is for that word the or that sound the so thou well is see you agus well is see you everyone so in in Cornish uh, if, you, if it's only one person, you say thou wellis, and if it's more than one person, then you say agus wellis, see you all, or see, see goodbye to everyone. So nos da, good night, thou wellis, see ya, 
address Gwellis, see you all. Okay, so we're gonna give this a go. So I'm gonna start the conversation and you can reply with the words on the right. So there's only us here, so let's give it a go. Do the best you can uh, and just enjoy. It doesn't matter if you get it wrong, it's just, you know, the, the more we kind of go back through, the more we give it a practice, the better we'll be. So, um, so just have a go at this. If you want to go back through the slides and see how it's all pronounced beforehand, you can do so. I'll talk, just talk through this once, just so that you can hear it now. But if you want to go back and practice anything, uh, please do. So I'm going to say dith da, and you'll say to me dith da. So I'm going to say fat la genis, and you're going to say in point da. So I'm going to say avint kavos te, and you'll say min nav ma pleg. And I'll ask avint uh, kavos tezen, and you'll say nivinav. Okay, so here we go. Dith da. Fat la genis. Avint kavos te. Oh, a vinter cavos tezen. Brilliant. So I hope you tried that. Um, we, you can just keep going over that. Give that a try. Uh, grab a friend you can do that with. Um, just enjoy it. A bit of fun. L learning languages shouldn't be uh, kind of a chore. It should be just a bit of fun and just enjoy. Enjoy just kind of trying things and trying to kind of get you you know, get your mouth around these interesting new words and just learning new stuff, it's all good. So just keep on enjoying it. To finish up today, I just want to read a little portion of a great story for you in Cornish, just so that you can hear Cornish spoken. Uh, this story is called Joan Chien Hoff, Joan of the Ram's House. It's a beautiful story, hundreds of years old. Uh, it's been translated many times. And um, this is just the little uh, introduction section uh, so if you want to have a listen, please sit back with your tea and cake and I'll read this to you in Cornish. I hope you enjoy. Here we go. In Terminus Pasius, if there's a trigus in St. Levin, Dain Habenin, in Telecrius Chienhorth. So in times past, uh, in St. Levin, there lived a man and a woman in a place called Chienhorth of the Ram's House. Hagen well a go the scant, Hagen mere than dame them rake, Mere than moors the wheelers well the woo, Ha wheel ill dendalagus bonins on. So, um, so when the work got scarce, uh, the man said to his wife, um, I want to go and search for work to do, and you can stay here and continue to live your life. Cumius take ever gemerus, Ha pell the nest ever drivalius, Ha warren do it. Ever rugdoors the GTEC had a rugwheelers in a quelled wool. So he got permission and he travelled far to the east. And at the end, he came to a farmer's house and he sought there uh, work to do. Pan a quell in his in meth and teek, pup quell in meth joan, in a we are Varginius rag tree ferns and leathern gober. So, um, so the farmer said to him, what kind of work can you do? And Joan said, any kind of work. So they bargained together and agreed on three pounds uh, for a year's work. Hapan is a do with them leathern, he vesta a disquethers and tree ferns. Mira Joan, in Medham Vester, Oma the Wober, Mes Mar Minti Re the Marta, Mea Visk these pointer skeins. So when came the end of the year, his master showed him the three pounds. Look, Joan, the master said, here is your pay, but if you want to give it to me again, I will teach to you a point of knowledge. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I will, I can, if you want to uh, hear a bit more, I will add it on to the, uh, the next Cornish lesson. So unfortunately we've come to the end of the lesson. I hope you enjoyed the learning that you've had here. I hope you enjoyed the story. I hope you enjoyed your tea and cake. And um, all I have left to say to you is Muras 
Hag Agas Gwales. Goodbye and thank you all.